Patrice, let me start with you. Obviously, okay. uh, Connor Lamb, he, he, he ran as an anti-Pelosi. He was, he was pro, he's pro-guns, anti-abortion, pro-tariffs. I mean, if you, if you didn't know better, you would, would have thought he was a Republican candidate. I mean, he was a Trump Democrat. Uh, he, as you laid out, he supports lots of issues that, unfortunately, for the Democrats, many in their base would totally disagree with. And when you consider that, you know, a lot of Democrats right now are trying to figure out how they can appease those who are very far left and still try to reach out to those in the center who voted for um, President Trump, this is probably more of an anomaly than anything else. Yeah, Chris, it might be an anomaly, and I think that's how the GOP is soothing themselves today. But how does this guy usurp President Trump's message and, and and his accomplishments, how does he get the steel worker uh, vote when President Trump is out there fighting for steel workers? Well, he had to hit a lot of the places where Donald Trump hit with Pennsylvania voters, the kind of reasons why the voters in his district went by 20 points for Donald Trump. And he checked all of the boxes. He was a Marine Corps veteran. He didn't attack the Second Amendment rights. He talked about ways to figure out the coal problem, although if you look, if you look into his coal record, he actually says, I'm pro-coal, but there's nothing we can do to save these jobs. If you look into his abortion record, he says, I'm against abortion, but I would vote for late-term abortion. So he kind of went back to a little bit of the old Democratic uh, book of talking about working-class issues that these people care about and really just dodging the more socially awkward questions for them on those issues and just, just trying to push them away. And that's not really what the DNC has been doing. The DCCC has not been funding a candidates who actually were against abortion. And the base is so viciously against it, I'd be amazed to see if they could follow this playbook elsewhere in the country. What does it mean then, Patrice, for the midterms? I mean, what can we glean from it, if anything at all? Is this just, to your earlier point, perhaps some sort of strange anomaly that uh, can't be replicated uh, anywhere else? Well, I think in the short term, uh, they'll try to fundraise off of this and maybe push their candidates to be a little bit more embracing of, um, of, of middle America and some of the, the values and the issues that a lot of Americans care about. But, you know, I, I, I somehow I don't think that you're going to see the sweeping change and, and see more of, of these lambs, you'll see a lot more of those who are very ultra right or sorry, ultra left and who are pushing, you know, progressive ideals that are that are, you know, uh, uh, that, that that would be uh, not embracing of, I think, things like free trade, things that, uh, you know, that are actually going to help real Americans. Lamb got 79 uh, percent of the Democratic turnout from the midterm elect I mean, from the presidential elections, Christopher, whereas uh, Saccone only got 52 percent. Uh, the enthusiasm gap, uh, whatever drives that, we know midterm elections are notorious for, major, for the incumbents losing. How does the Republican Party address that? That's going to be one of the massive problems. The Democrats don't really have any problem right now at all getting their voters out. I was talking to a Republican in Connecticut, and he was seeing statewide ra or, or local races around Connecticut, Republicans losing to Democrats who hadn't even campaigned because people were so juiced up, the Democratic base was. Republicans have, a lot, have to do a lot to try and counter that. They probably push their tax reform, push, uh, attack the Democrats. And I think that one of the things that they ought to consider what they're doing right now is, well, the mainstream media, a lot of it's getting very excited about this gun control pushes and calling it a new era. If the Republicans return to the playbook of, hey, you know, Democrats are actually seriously this time coming for your guns, that plays extremely well. It excites a, a group of voters that are often Republican voters, single-issue voters, at a level that if they actually feel like that's happening, will come out for the GOP. Patrice, your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, I, I still would underscore the impact of tax reform and tax cuts on everyday American paychecks. I think that's something that Republicans are going to be pushing pretty hard. And it's still, it's still, I, I think it does earn some, some brownie points. But beyond gun control, you know, Democrats really don't have a positive vision and a positive message. And when you've got people like Hillary Clinton, who's really calling middle America backwards and pessimistic and everything else, they've got to be able to show what they have that, that's going to be different from what she's saying. And, and unfortunately, I don't hear anything other than maybe anti-guns. All right. Thank you both very, very much.